you join us in the E63 Generation 6 Series. This is the 630i with a manual gearbox. Now, um, this is actually my own car. Um, it was bought on a bit of an impulse, a bit of a, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, just a bit of a curiosity um, during last sort of summer. I, I was thinking to myself, you'll know from the channel that I've got quite a fondness for the you know straight six BMW petrol engines and in particular the N52 and I guess the N53 generations I've only um, really sp sort of spent a large amount of time with the N52 though um, so the non-direct injection uh, car that I think is all that, that went to the US I don't think they got the um, the direct injection M53 um, however I was just thinking, you know, I really enjoyed it in the 3 Series, in the E91 uh, we had, the Touring, which was the um, 330i manual M Sport. Um, and I got thinking about these 6 Series, and one came up uh, with a manual box. I thought, I, I wonder what that's like, sort of thing. I wonder what it's like in there. Now, so starting with the 6 Series as a whole, it's not actually um, specifically the type of car that I, um, you know, ordinarily would be that particularly interested in so to speak because I'm more of a sort of lightweight small car kind of guy you know that's why I've got the 205 for instance um, but you know historically growing up and stuff I've always you know appreciated the likes of a Lotus or you know some of the old JDM cars like a uh, Integra Type R or what have you, you know which are a lightweight you know very driver focused cars um, so a big, a big sort of what you might class or, or stereotype as a Luxo barge, so to speak, is not necessarily um, what you might have in mind for me. But um, as I say, the lure of this engine and the price point these cars can be found at now um, sort of put me towards, uh, you know, at least looking into one. Um, and lo and behold, here we are. So let's look at the 6 series so the 6 series you know restarted the the you know the 6 series in general it had been dormant for a long time that model um, and then i think it came out in 2003 the c63 generation with the 645 the the v8 um, and then they developed into the the 650s but so the car was kind of developed with the um, the big V8 in, in mind and, and a big sort of Jaguar XK rival or perhaps a Merc SL. Um, I know on BMW's initial sort of sales guff, they were they were talking about a, a balance of rivaling a Porsche 911 and a um, Jaguar sort of XK and, and a Merc SL sort of thing. But I, I think it you know it is it's a Grand Tour. It's not a, it's not so much a sports car, but. You know, that's how they were sort of imagining the car. Now, it's based on the E60 sort of underpinnings, the Generation 5 series underpinnings, but there's quite a lot of advancements with this car that actually make it quite interesting. So, as I say, it was developed uh, to have the big V8s uh, and still, they say, remain quite lightweight. Now, there's extensive use of aluminium in this car, uh, amongst other materials, and then when they put the 6, the, the 3 litre, the M52 engine in the car, as a sort of uh, well, as the as the most affordable model, um, it actually kind of made the, makes the car a bit interesting to me um, from a more usable sort of uh, GT car perspective because you know the N52. Um, I've mentioned it before about how you know how much I, I love that engine, but it's uh, the lightest six-cylinder in the world, or at least it was pitched as such um, when it was new. So I believe it weighs about 160 kilos, which is actually um, lighter than the RS4 engine in our recent video, um, which is also a six-cylinder. So, you know, you know, how many years on is that? I know it's got the complication of turbocharging and things like that, but, you know, this is still a lightweight engine. It's got a magnesium alloy block, um, which is quite, which was quite sort of, un I think it was a, a, a first, you know, revolutionary at the time. So. So yeah, it's a very lightweight engine, and then when you put that lightweight engine in this car that was designed in order to house a big V8, all of a sudden there's quite a bit of space up front for this engine, and um, the car is a lot lighter. So 
as I say, this isn't necessarily the type of car that I would initially think of as being something up my street. I would, I would have preferred perhaps like a, like a three series um, with a three liter engine. However, our 330 Touring E91 was down as weighing about 1,550 kilos. And this six cylinder, this, sorry, this six series, this 630 with a manual gearbox and in basic spec like it is, it's really quite basic, this car, is down as being somewhere in the region of 1,500 kilos. So it, it, it might actually even be lighter um, if you look at those statistics and if those statistics are correct than the three series, um, like for like with the engine. So um, that makes it quite an interesting proposition the car that you would consider as being large heavy and boaty might actually be lighter or at least the same kind of weight as the um as the three series so in order to keep the weight sort of down uh, like they have the car's got aluminium bonnet it's got aluminium doors it's got aluminium all throughout the underfloor so the subframes and whatever else there's loads of little uh, we took the strut brace off in the engine bay the other day and that was paperweight you know um, aluminium again there's loads of different uh, materials the um, boot the bangle boot so to speak is a uh, some kind of reinforced plastic um, the wings the front wings are some sort of fiber reinforced plastic I, you know i want to say carbon enforced but i don't i don't think it is that but they are you know where they where they could they've they've reduced the weight oh we've got a nice rs6 in front of us so yeah they've they've gone to great efforts to reduce the weight and to keep this car you know able to perform and there you go it sings it's you know it's the typical bmw straight six recipe but it does it, do, it being early like that the car does actually have a lot more sort of an old school feel than even our three series um which is quite interesting to me so the three series for instance had a you know touch button star a button star but this is just a key you've just got a key um turn the key you don't need to put the clutch down to start it or anything like that in a modern car it's just literally like an old-fashioned car take the key in put it in turn it off you go sort of thing um, it's really actually quite basic it doesn't even come any, with any cup holders you have to you know mount something somewhere um, so it's really weird in that this car is a modern comfortable well-built you know refined sort of ride but it also feels really old school and actually more old school than the e90 generation 3 series um, and it's that that kind of stole my heart when i when i went to drive it and i thought do you know what i actually really like it i was really worried it was going to be boaty um, and i was i was thinking to myself yeah i, I I think they're kind of cool, I think they're kind of quirky, but I'm just not into, you know, a big luxo, luxo barge, so to speak. But the car has surprised me immediately with its steering feel. This has got a hydraulic rack and it does have a sport button, which um, varies the assistance, but it does so by reducing the amount of, you know, um, power assistance it, it receives. And when you press this, it doesn't matter if you've got the sport button or not, but with the sport button on, it, it makes it you know much firmer but but what's really interesting about this car is there's so much texture that i just didn't expect to have um through the wheel the wheel is absolutely like coming down a road like this i'm feeling texture the whole time so it makes the car feel old-fashioned and well not old-fashioned it makes the car just feel a, 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 like a driver's car like something so when you come down a sort of slightly open back road it's a joy to steer it's a joy to thread through it because I'm getting uh, a sensation and a feeling that I just didn't expect to get in a car like this. I, I mean, I haven't got the 3 Series anymore, so I can't tell you, you know, exactly what it's like to jump into one to the other, but I don't remember this level of texture. I remember it having great steering feel, but I don't remember the texture, so to speak. Uh, I, I hope you sort of can understand what I mean when I, when I speak about sort of like the texture coming through the wheel. It's not just about um you know the forces uh, that are on a wheel um, i mean the 205 for instance is full of texture and and you know full of feel as well as a result but this car you know it, it has a degree of that um 
as I say, I expected it to be quite boaty. It's very long, but a lot of the nose is just in overhang. Um, when you look at how far back the engine is, there's a lot of space just in front of it that is, is literally just overhang. Um, I don't know if it's styling or what, but yeah. So the car is, is not perhaps as long or as, as, as you know, ungainly as it might sort of appear. Um, we've taken it on uh, quite a few long journeys and things, and it is the consummate Grand Tourer. Um, it's markably better on fuel than our 3 Series was, and, and really it shouldn't be that much difference. I don't know if it's just an over-enthusiastic um, MPG readout on the computer, or if it's um, perhaps a combination with the uh, maybe it's you know much lower drag coefficient for instance I don't know it's got huge great wheels they're 275 section on the rear so it must have plenty of rolling resistance um, to fight you know against but yeah it, it cruises well you can easily do 40 plus to the gallon easily um, and and you know obeying you're not going you're not being you know stupidly slow for instance um, I don't know if it feels actually quite as fast as the 3 Series, and given that it's there or thereabouts with the, the same weight, um, you'd, and, and when you look at the book figures, they're pretty much the same as well. I think it's more to do with the fact that it's just so much more refined that you're, you know, you experience that much less of it, you know, it's, it's not so in your face. So, I mean, personally, I'd like it if it was a little bit more shouty and a little bit more proud of, of what it can do, so to speak. Um, you know, the engine noise is full of wonderful quality and this is something I said about the 3 series is wonderful quality of noise just not that much quantity but interestingly the 3 series has got a more I'd say more aggressive um, intake um, setup it's got a different um, air intake system I think this car's probably got a slightly bigger resonator and what have you to to dampen off and it's probably just got more sound deadening in general so your your you know experience of the noise is, is a bit more damped down a bit more quiet below sort of 3000 rpm you barely know this car's got an engine um, but if you if you do run it out we'll try and just give it a little bit of yeah it really sings out I don't know if you'll even hear it I can hear it and it sounds wonderful but you know with the mics I've got mic'd up for myself talking and what have you it might not pick up the um, the actual audio of the the engine because it's that much you know muted from obviously my voice but it sounds glorious to me and it's enough it, it, the quality of the noise is nice enough that it, it provides me with the entertainment I, I require but yeah it would be lovely if it was a bit more shouty but it is that balance because I guess, you know, anything above sort of like a three series, so a five series, six series, seven series, BMW have got refinement and, and long distance cruising and autobahn sort of cruising in mind. So it, they, they've built something that will cruise quietly and, you know, with assurance, quiet assurance. Um, and, you know, if you gave it a lot more of a vocal sort of sporting characteristic, you'll lose that sort of, um, you know, luxury, refined sort of uh, characteristic. So what's really quite interesting is with the sport button, it's more responsive than I would expect it to be as well under your foot. So obviously the one thing that is more modernized is that it's an electronic um, accelerator, electronic, you know, drive by wire. But when you press the sport button, it really sharpens up the throttle response. And it sharpens it up enough that I don't necessarily miss the fact that it isn't a cable. I mean, I'd love it. I Personally, I'm weird like that. I'd love it to be a cable because I, I know every car, like my old 205, the MX-5, whatever else, I love the fact that they're just a cable and they're so responsive. Um, but this car, it's got, it, it's so sharp that, you know, if you want to blip a downshift like that, it just does it. it, it it's so easy to do because it's so responsive and, and more so um, than I expected. Um, so, and the car feels lighter on its toes than you would expect and that's probably down to the, you know, the use of aluminium once you've got this six cylinder in there, um, it, it does feel lighter than you expect. You, you can sense that, I mean I'm just talking about road driving here, I'm not going on any tracks or anything like that with it. The, the purpose of this car is to be you know, fun on open roads 
roads like this and, and longer journeys like driving up to the Cotswolds and things like that but um, yeah it's you just flip it down you can you can flip the changes and it pulls lovely it sounds nice you come down you can flip a it's brilliant just brilliant um, way more fun heel and toe just not the sort of things you expect to be doing in a big six series um, I think of you know just cruising along slowly and enjoying the comfort and the serenity but actually you know you will dance and you can feel that sort of inherent sort of 50 50 weight distribution front engine rear wheel drive characteristics to it 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 feels sorted and it feels pleasurable you can you can you can sense um, the car's sort of core dynamics from just just driving it you know with a slight bit of enthusiasm on a um, public road the manual box to me is wonderful uh, the only you know downside once again to the fact that it's got this sort of GT characteristics is the fact that the gears are very long leg and so you haven't got you know you can't wring its neck through all the gears and and get up there I mean well let's drop it and see if we can get a bit of a Yeah, so I mean, you're easily in 60 in um, in second gear, but so third gear is really tall geared. I don't know if it's the same um, gear ratios that we're in the E90 um, Generation 3 series. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I feel like that car might have been slightly shorter, but I, I'm not sure. I bet if you change the um, ratios on that, on this car, it, I bet it would come alive even more so. You know, I wonder, I know, um, so with our, the track car that's on the channel, the um, the E39 generation that's now supercharged, one of the things the guys did was they put in a, I think it was like a 523 differential or something, because the 530s is longer geared. So once they did that, it short shortened all the ratios and it made it so that you might be at the top of like, let's say 80 odd in third gear. So, um, it's made the car, it was about 15% difference anyway, like its top speed is way down on what it would have been because it, 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 its gearing's down, but it's made it much more alert and, and you know much more lively to drive. And I bet if, you, if there's a similar sort of mod you could do on this car, I bet it would really bring it to life. But then on the other hand, you know, you lose the other side of the characteristics where you, know, you can sit it in sixth, you can cruise on the motorway and get 40 plus to the gallon. Uh, enhancing its, you know, long-range uh, characteristics. But yeah, I really do feel this might be the best BMW that nobody talks about um, because I don't hear anyone speaking about it. Because I think, you know, it, it has this sort of a slight sort of cultural idea that the six series um, is a, a particularly this generation I think people see it as the 645 the 650 with an automatic gearbox and a sort of a bit of an old smoker you know for a, an old gent in the countryside just to waft around in but actually as it turns out stick the three litre engine in it stick a manual gearbox in it and actually it's quite a lively old drive um, much more than you expect I guess to wrap it up the key things are that it feels really organic it's much more responsive than I ever would have considered. Blipping and changing on a downshift is just, you know, not the sort of thing I would have, I, I have in mind when I think of a car like this, but it's, look, it, it bosh, off you go. It's a joy. The gearbox is lovely to work and the whole car just has got such an honesty to it so that when you're threading it through different you know corners and windy country lanes it's enjoyable it's just it's just a really really lovely steer and and something I just didn't expect I'm sort of quite falling for the car actually I think it would actually be quite good fun let's have a squirt it's brilliant <laughs> I think it would be quite good fun to take one of these as like a bit of a, a project and actually like do things like try and shorten the gear ratios, get rid of some of the sound deadening and see how much 
you know more of a sports characteristic you could bring out of it because I think it's got a, I think it's like really quite capable um, but but as I say it, this car's role in life will be to to take us on longer journeys and things like that and to enjoy its GT characteristics um, and actually it is a really good balance and um, even coming down a road like this um, as I say even if you're not at 10 tenths or anything like that even if you're just sort of um, driving in a uh, slightly spirited manner um, just with the sport button on basically it's still good fun it's still it's still a fun steer it's still a, uh, a pleasure to yeah a pleasure to drive and and to feel its inherent characteristics it it feels it's got a lovely balance to it, it feels you know like just fun you know switch switch it down to third and and then it, it's just lovely I love the way it squirts out it's really good fun and the point is it's fun at, you know normal speeds not even crazy sort of thrashing it about type stuff so yeah it, it is it is a luxury car it is a big car but it, it's just more honest and more fearsome than I ever anticipated so yeah I do believe this could be one of the BMWs a bit of a hidden gem at the moment I, I don't really hear anyone speaking about it I don't hear I don't know what it's like as an auto I mean for me the manual gearbox does make a big difference it, it provides massive amounts more entertainment oh finally you'll hear on the drive-bys it sounds lovely from outside the exhaust noise is absolutely glorious and, and definitely better um, than it was on our 330M Sport, which I also thought sounded spectacular. But the thing about these two pipes, it sounds really lovely. It's just a shame I can't hear much of it whilst driving along. If I put the windows down, you can hear a bit more. I don't know if you'll hear it here though, but yeah, look. Yeah, I don't know. You go through a tunnel um, you can hear it and things and it is quite good fun to get these huge windows open um, that's it it's, it's so much fun to just to blip it it feels old school it feels old school give it a stretch <laughs> it just it's so creamy it's so smooth and the whole time I'm getting the feel through the wheel as well, which I, I, you know, I didn't anticipate having. So, yeah. I hope you've... Oh, we'll just have it down to a second and give it another stretch of the old legs. So I think that about wraps us up. I hope you've enjoyed, you know, finding out about this car. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.